Mike Myers is best looking. Speak up, Teddy Bear. What? Speak up. Speak Yeah, I'm trying to want to speak up, but the thing is the volume won't go up. So, so everybody can hear. This is Time Hart. He's going to be doing most of the presentation. He's blind. He uses uh, adaptive technology, technology to help the blind, right? Yeah, that would be accurate. What's the thing? Text to speech. System. Text to speech. Yeah, but <laughs> but to to be fair, we have two people here in the back here that use Braille a lot, so uh, it's not just exclusive. Yeah. Uh, and and Brian Albritton and Denise Albritton. Yes, and and uh, I've been friends with, with them for quite some years, uh, <laughs> back two or three presidents ago. <laughs> Um, and uh, they, they actually, I think, Ryan, you, you use Braille and speech at the same time, right? Yeah, we both do. Yeah, yeah. see, and that's kind of a novel concept. I can't imagine how distracting that would be. But, um, so, so um, we're I, gonna, I'm here to kind of keep chime, like have an outline, and have, make sure it doesn't skip anything, or keep things on track. So, we're going to go over a little bit of te terminology first so the rest of the presentation makes sense. So uh, why don't you tell us what a speech engine is, John? Um, it, it's a way of, well, actually, you, a speech synthesizer, it, it, it takes, how do I explain that? It, it, it's not a screen reader. It just it, it, it makes the words, you know, I guess. I don't know. Okay. So, so I did a little looking up on this on Wikipedia. So typically, the, the simplified high-level view of a, a speech engine is as two components. The front end that takes text from wherever it's being sent from, and then it changes things into tokens, essentially. Like, this is going to remind anybody who has a CS degree of their compiler class. So like the numeric number one is changed into the word one, a one six becomes 16. So it doesn't make sense. So it makes sense to the person listening to it later. Then there's a back-end system. There's, a, um, there's quite a few different algorithms and techniques available. But essentially, that's what takes these tokens and produces the audible sound. Um, and that's the speech synthesizer. Uh, my, my interest in this is, um, or my job, I'm a data scientist, so I'm kind of curious how this has changed having worked on systems with Chime. So one of the interesting new areas are these advanced deep learning based synthesizers that have come out. Um, and I have a couple samples of those. I don't think you've even heard. Uh, so we'll get to that. Yeah, um, the one that uh, the Mark played for me is called Watson. It's really good speech, but, but it's just an SDK. It's not even well, it, you know, it's not even a where you can use it yet. Yeah. So what what is a screen reader then? Um, a screen reader actually takes the the um, the words from the screen and, and reads it. You know, it's just very simple. Okay. Yeah. That what type of screen reader is that? Uh, there's a lot of them. I mean, no, but that's a text-based screen reader. Right? Yeah. Uh, tell us about a graphical screen reader. Um, well, there's in Windows. There's of course JAWS and Window Eyes and NVDA. Um, and in Linux, there's Orca, and there was used to be LSR. I don't know if it's people still get it. Right. And how do these work? <laughs> well, they're graphical. I mean, how? how uh, I, so you I, I, I'm not sure. No, I, I, you know, I'm not sure because I don't know how to use a graphical screen reader in Linux, so which is, you know, that's the way it is. All right. so, so essentially, there are two types of screen readers. Uh, Chime, for example, uses a, a one of the text-based screen readers where he's working primarily in a terminal. Um, other people have chosen to try to work in a graphical environment yeah. using a, a graphical screen reader I have that a, I tells have you things about window positions and what window you have open and what tab in Firefox may or may not be open. I, I knew someone back around 2006, a really expert Linux, you know, blind person who decided, I, 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 the silverware crashes around and kind of distracting. Um, the, um, this guy was really good at Linux, and finally he decided to go completely graphical. He said, now I can do my own banking. You know, because the, of all the JavaScript and stuff, he couldn't, uh, you know, bank in, uh, in uh, uh, the text browsers. And so he went to graphical completely. Now, I won't do that. So, so within sort of the graphical model, there's, uh, uh, there's this concept of self-voicing applications. So a, an application that actually comes with a screen reader itself, like the first OCR system you had that. Uh, you know, open, you know, book. open book, yeah. Open book is an example. Um, Emacs Speak is an example of a, an application that sort of has its own screen reader built into it. Um, there's several cloud-based web applications that kind of act as portals so that when someone goes to a, uh, say, the LA Times, it tries to read the contents of that page for you. That's pretty much it, right? And then the, another big thing is to these uh, idea of accessibility APIs. So uh, Windows has one that's called, I think it's SAPI, S-A-P-I. Yeah. Um, 
the, no, the, so the, the, the sappy four and five speeches are good, especially the four. But, 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 but like most of those speeches, they sound spliced. You can hear like little glitches in the, in the audio. Okay. If you're a perfectionist, like I am. You know. All right, so why don't, we, why don't you tell them about your your process and how you started using computers? Sure, sure. Um, about, night, about September of 1993, I was talking to somebody and somebody was like, oh, you ought to get a computer. I'm like, I don't want a computer, you know? And um, so um, I then had some demos, um, like three consecutive weeks from different vendors. Um, and, you know, I saw a different system. At first, I was just going to get uh, a reading machine. That's all I wanted. I thought, well, um, you know, I can read books or whatever. And I didn't even think about being online. I never thought about it. It was back then, if you wanted to know what the weather was in Houston or something, you had to ask someone to look in the newspaper for you. Or, or if you're lucky enough to have a good station that had a good weatherman, you, you'd get all that stuff. Uh, so um, then I had a demo. Uh, from this, the people that I bought my first system from. Uh, and and uh, I went, with, this was September 93, by April of the next year, I had my first system. And um, I did, honestly, I didn't know what a DOS prompt was or any of that. I was a, a reasonably good typist, a horrible speller. But, and um, so I had this machine, and I knew how to scan books. And the first book I read was by um, uh, this uh, boxing announcer who was no longer with us, named Wes Kider. And I, I, I read his book. It was about the time of President Nixon's passing. And I had, so I had a lot of time to read this book. And eventually, when um, the person who came to install the rest of the system would, would give me these cassette tapes and say, Okay, to, to get to go on to CompuServe, you you type you uh, sitting at a DOS prompt and you type C I S and hit enter. Well, for two years, I was like memorizing these commands as to what to do. I didn't correlate them in my mind and say, oh gee, I can do this other thing now that I know this command. I never thought to do that, and because I never really learned DOS, I just kind of got used to it. And I, so, in reality, I learned it the wrong way. And, and the other funny thing about it was when I, I you know, I had this uh, OCR and I, I had uh, scanned uh, a pamphlet about astrology and I, I noticed that all it took was the word astrologue and I thought, what, why can't they lengthen that beyond eight letters? I never knew that there was a, a, a limit in DOS, you know, you couldn't go beyond eight letters. And uh, I, why, why don't you tell them about your hardware that you use for what, what speech synthesizer? I had a, I had an internal death talk. Okay. Uh, it was a card, an ISA card. Yeah. It went inside the machine. It's a, a death talk 4.1C. It was a really great sounding thing. Uh, there are there are uh, there are death talk archives around. You can hear they. Uh, I mean, we don't have them with us, I don't think. But and uh, I. You know, I knew people that had other computers with horrible speech. I thought, why would you listen to that? You know, and everyone said, oh, the death talk is the Cadillac of speech. And I, in my mind, if I'm going to listen to a computer 16 or 18 hours a day for pleasure, it's going to sound like, well, I want it to. Not, you know, and so. Speaking of which, you, you customized the sound? I, I, I back then, I, I once I learned how, it had a, um, uh, an exception dictionary. Uh, Brian remembers those, I think. Yes. Yeah. And I had a rather large one because I was very particular about words. Uh, you know, even just silly things. My old name was Larry. Okay. I changed it last year. And the 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 death talk would pronounce it like Californians do, like it's L A I R Y. And I wanted it to be Larry, like a cat. So you had to go into this. You know, there was a procedure, and then you. You type the word the way the way the actual spelling, and you and the next line you put the way you want it to sound. So you had to write like L A O R Y, and then it was it was pronounced it the way. And How did you pronounce Florida? Florida. 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 Yeah. And, right. So I. What, what was the screen reader that you were using? Uh, a Vocalize. I loved it. I wish I could use it now, but uh, it, uh, from what I understand, you can't use Vocalize with the desktop USB, which is what I have now. So I've written the GW Micro, and that's a shame. Told me. And a vocalizer is a, a great screen reader. It, it has, yes, it was. The, the thing is that um, 
it was very feature rich because those, these are commercial screen readers like JAWS and with, you know, the window screen readers, they're commercial. So of course they have to respond to the users you know, if they want features. In Linux, because people kind of do it yourself, if somebody wants a feature, they either put it under themselves, you know, uh, uh, add it to the, like in SpeakUp, for example, which is the most popular Linux screen reader, I could have to say. Um, you know, somebody might hack around and add something, but um, the attitude seems to be, well, just, add, you know, add it yourself. Well, I'm not a programmer, I'm just a user, so <laughs> I have to wait for someone else. What are the features that Vocalize have that you miss in SpeakUp? Um, the exception dictionary. Okay. Uh, now, I can do that with a character dictionary, so if I want to type the word nine, and I want it to say niner, well, this one doesn't have the changes we made, but okay, I can't show you. Um, there's a way to do that. But in the exception dictionary, you know, if I, well, I'll tell you something funny. I, I, I guess I'd have to say in a certain way I'm like a prude. So when I first got my, when I first got my computer, I thought, Gee, I can take all the swear words and change them into the word bleep, so I'll never, <laughs> so I'll never have to hear one. Well, then I realized I would have to type them, which is about the same as saying them, so I, I dropped that. <laughs> so, right. so uh, why don't you tell us about your it work? You worked for what? Uh, it was then at the time it was GTE. It became Verizon, and now it's Frontier. Okay. And you had a the I, same system, right? Yeah, well, I, I, I got a computer, uh, the same thing as I had at home uh, from the same people about a year, uh, I started, well, a year after I had my home system. And at first, my coworkers were like, you've got the best computer in the, in the house, what are you doing with it? You know, because uh, at times I wasn't just used to doing company work, I was just kind of like, gee, I get on CompuServe and read the news or the weather, or, you know, whatever. And, uh, but eventually we would go, back then you, you use uh, software, I think you, they like Procom, uh, because we only had dial-ups then, and you'd go into the, um, the uh, mailboxes uh, for the voicemail from different central offices, and you had to maintain those. Uh, so I, I would run some of the routines that we did that. And that was, you know, mostly good then. And were you working in, say, 1996? Yeah. What happened about that time? Uh, well, 1996. Uh, I'm adding a year because software schedules always slip at least. Oh, here, right? oh, oh, okay. Well, I, in my situation didn't change in the office until 2000 when somebody dragged me into Windows, kicking and screaming. Okay. Uh, but, but for a number of blind people, there's well, oh, 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 yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah, that, this is why this is going to work really well. He, it, this is like me for press, where he's asking me questions. That's actually better. I didn't, I, I didn't think so at first, but now I understand why it is. Um, it, when, there was a piece on 60 Minutes many years ago with the guy who invented JAWS for Windows. I think it was Hector JAWS. Yeah. And um, I guess there were blind people that were losing their jobs when Windows came along. So he invented this. It's, it JAWS is job. Uh, no, jo, uh, job, job access with speech. Yeah, it is. yeah. Thank you. Job access with speech and uh, JAWS is up to I mean, version 20 or something now. Yep. And you. they they've gobbled up most of the paying market now. There was another screen reader called Window Eyes. It's I think it's pretty much gone now. The the company that bought it's, out. It's still for sale actually. You told me that it was bought by Freedom Scientific, but apparently it was spun off into another company. Look up some oh, yeah? later on. It's oh, yeah. 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 Uh, is very expensive. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and the, uh, there's also a free screen reader in Windows for the MVDA, uh, which is actually written in Python. I asked them uh, multiple times, well, why don't you make a Linux version? We'd love to have it. They said, oh, and they said they didn't want to do it. Well, yeah. it's, it's a graphical screen reader, right? Passes well, way. yeah, I know. So it's going to. But if, it's Python, but if it's Python, why can't they just a Linux version? Because the graphics in Windows are completely different the way they operate than in Linux, right? Oh, you say so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so tell us uh, so, when, when, when you moved on from the DOS world. Oh, okay. So, um, I, by 1996, I was finally used to DOS to where I could write my own batch files, uh, and, and that was a lot of fun. And I, I was on CompuServe a lot, and I was, and then I had a, a Unix shell account. My first one, well, actually, I think before I was in Netcom, one of the one of my friends who's here, 
had me log into his system, and I had no idea what I was doing. Absolutely. And I asked him, I said, can, can we get to alt.music.techno? He said, we can carry that group if you want. You know, this is Usenet. And, um, um, and that was the first time I was ever able to use Z-Modem, because CompuServe didn't have that. They had G and Y and, and X modem, you know, but not Z-Modem. So it was, with CompuServe, you had to type when you downloaded something, you had to not only type the name of the file you wanted, but the name of what you wanted to call it. As where Z-Modem would just do all that for you, you know. Uh, anyway, so um, in 1997, I was starting to get to the point where I wanted sound. I had a sound card, but it, w it was only 8-bit, and when it played WAV files, it would play them at half speed because these were 16-bit WAV files. And, and, and uh, so there's a um, so then uh, somebody talked me into getting a new system. So by that time, you know, I got Jaws for Windows. I really didn't understand it very well, but at least with the desktop, you could kind of arrow up and down and mash enter on the file. So it, it had a menu, you know. It was and I could play my MP3s and whatever and whatever and rename them and do all this stuff with Windows and. Um, uh, but certain things I was used to doing in DOS didn't quite work the same in, in Windows, or you couldn't, yeah. it was a kludge, you know. And what else did, um, yeah, I was going to say, you know you're at a Linux user's group. I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the history. Okay. So I, I, pretty much when I would, um, when I would, even, even on the Windows machine, most of the time I would go to a DOS prompt because I, I was more comfortable in there, and I you know, logged out, I had different shell accounts over the years, and I spent most of the time going on and off of those. It was the same environment. And like I said, one of, the, one of my friends who's here wrote me a lot of the scripts in TCSH that I used on there, and still using them. Uh, yeah. So eventually you... Yeah. What, what? Yeah. Linux. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, Linux? Yeah, yeah, Linux. Well, I mean, I was using a, a, Linux, a Unix shell, so, uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, so, in, um, in 2003, we were, uh, one of the yeah, late, from this, uh, this guy named Bill Acker, who's no longer with us, unfortunately, he was maintaining uh, Red Hat and, and Fedora, you know, and he was, uh, once the, once the desktop drivers, were available for speak up. He, uh, he was able to set me up along with with, with Jim over there for um, uh, get uh, dual booting uh, Windows and uh, DOS. I mean uh, Linux. Okay. That, that was a disaster because somehow or other, my mom got this Linux per this pseudo Linux person over the house who didn't know what he was doing and got stuck, didn't have the decency to call me at work and say, gee, I'm stuck, what do I do? So I come home and he say, it says very calmly, I had to uh, format the hard drive. And I'm like, you're serious, right? Is he, uh, and no emotion is void, and I'm, I'm like, I wasn't furious, but I was more surprised. And so within maybe three weeks, Jim came over and we reinstalled the system and we did the, uh, my, uh, file recovery that was sort of a disaster because a lot of the files were just, you know, DIR 13 and stuff like that. And you had to, uh, and the, uh, uh, a lot of them didn't have the first character and you had to figure out what it was. And so, so after that, slowly, uh, but the, the deck talk internal with speak up was, was did, the drivers were horrible. It would, it, it, as you would arrow up and down, it wouldn't interrupt the speech. It, would, it just wasn't ready for prime time. So in 2005, I got a, a new desktop USB, and it worked much better with speak up. Not perfect, but it was at least to the point where I could stay in Linux and not have to go back to Windows just for my comfort level. So this is an example of a hardware synthesizer? Um, the desktop, uh, it's an outboard. It's, it's a, Oh, you've seen it, it's on the left side over here. Yeah, yeah. And um, then in 2006, <laughs> Hondo, Hondo. so then in 2006, we finally got rid of Windows all together off the machine. Uh, and it was, we practically had a ceremony, it was really... You know. <laughs> what, what screen reader were you, did you start using in Linux? Um, speak up. I'm still using. So you've always you used speak up the whole time you've been. Um, I tried Yasser. Okay. I get another screen reader, mm -hmm. um, but I it couldn't get it to work with the desktop. 
Okay. <laughs> and I, I, it would also crash. So it did, it wasn't really ready for prime time. Okay, let's go back. The, the deck pop, the external deck pop, the deck pop USB, the drivers for it were much better? Uh, yeah. And the speech was better? The speech is better, yes, uh, but it still needs help. And uh, there's a guy I was writing to uh, at the company that sells the deck pop USB. He's trying to write a USB driver. So you have to run it in RS-232 mode for some reason. Okay. So he's trying to write a USB driver, which will probably help a lot. All right. He had never heard of speak up, which is funny. This is the part of the uh, presentation where Chime was going to show everyone how he works on his laptop. I think it's probably uh, too... Well, go ahead and play it. Let's see. Uh, it. Let's see. Yeah. Everybody here? Let me change, here. Let me change, the, change the rate of it. Oops, wrong one. Uh, where's the rate? Uh, whoops, not that one. Uh, okay, that's... Yeah. Okay, so maybe you can hear that. Yeah. So like if I type time, you'll hear it's the real time. Uh, uh, Thursday, September 13, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. Yeah, dance is the prompt. See, we got, we got three. This wasn't my idea that somebody decided that I was going to have a server machine at home that's called Bell. My machine is called Chime because, well, for obvious reasons. And dance is this one because I like dance music, you know. Wait, what? You have a file server at home? That was that was Jeff Carlson's so idea. Is that possibly because you keep destroying your 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 files on your regular machines? <laughs> Maybe that was a good idea. What, what's the uptime on Bell now? Uh, 151 days. All right. Yeah. yeah. What's the uptime on Chime? Um, well, it's like four days. Four now. days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is that typical? Uh, no. No. I it's usually that, less. Right? I, I, thank you. Um, I think the most of the time I've ever had is 150 days uh, on, on a regular machine. Um, so, so maybe we can show them something. I don't know. Okay, so uh, what I was going to, I was going to show you about some websites, but I don't know if there's something more basic you want to see before that. I can bring up the sites on the screen on your... Oh, you want to do that one? Oh, but don't, am I online here? No, no, no you're... Then I can't By show online, them. your your speaker is playing. No, 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 no. But I can't. I, oh, I, no, you're not. Then I can't show them anything. <laughs> okay. Uh, what site did you want to show? Okay, show them L, um, LA Times. LA Times .com. Okay. So, so what browser do you usually use? Links. 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 L Y N X. All right. So this is uh, the LA Times and Links. Um, so can they all see that? Yeah. 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 Okay. I so, can't see it from my. Oh, he, who can't see it? Get closer. How about, <laughs> how about now? Yeah, we we'll can't see it either. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Those letters are like eight inches. There you go. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> the deal is, so here, why don't you, pick, um, uh, why don't you pick an article for that? Right. Um, actually, pick, um, uh, do a, um, I'm trying to, here, do a, um, uh, I don't know, search for the word Syria or something. Right. How about uh, President Trump wins Nobel Prize? That would be a lie. <laughs> but it, it, if it's such an article, go to it. Okay, right. Wait, how are you seeing the screen right now? Who? You. He, he's not. I know. It gets read to him. Yeah, it, it, oh, it would normally read to him. He would read to So he's okay. trying to make some points about okay. how, I, how difficult not, it can be yeah. for well, one then, thing. Well, you'll, you'll see that one. Right. We don't. We so, have uh, the screen read, read to us also. Okay. 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 We're on some golden something. Oh, so we have online? No, not you. Me. Oh, me. oh, you. Okay. Yeah. So are you at the article? Yep. Okay. So you'll notice that, uh, at least when I did a count this morning, there are about 146 links before that article starts. Now, you try to listen to that with a screener, and I know Larry's machine isn't going to do it justice in one sense because you just browse down to the end and you just... Yeah. Is that the small alarm? No. Um, 146 uh, uh, links. Okay. And, we'll trust and, you. And, well, maybe it's different on tonight's article. I don't know. But anyway, the point is. It, <laughs> so you really need to have water for this as well. Um, well, it, it's, <laughs> it's, but it's, 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 I don't know. <laughs> but it, it's, 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 the point, oh, the yeah. point I'm trying to make is that um, years ago, most sites had. <laughs> Uh, that's would, not true. They would front load the article rather than having the links. 
Yeah, yeah and, and, yeah. and so there was a printer-friendly link or it said text only. Yeah. Or you read it from a gopher site, which uh, which didn't have links at all. And that was really nice. I mean, the Voice of America in the early 2000s, it was just plain text when you go to an article. And that's the way it should be. And for years, when I, I, go, to a, I go to a site like the Washington Times or one of these places, and they would change the, all of a sudden the printer friendly wouldn't work and I'd write to a guy or call and they'd fix it. Now you write to a webmaster, hi, I can't get to your site doing this, and they don't even write you back anymore because a lot of these young kids don't know anything about this, you know. Uh, tell, us, tell them what happens when you go to a crisis group. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go, okay, are you there in links? You want to make me do this? Well, I, if I go to it, they won't say okay, it. Okay, so if I go to crisisgroup.org, which is a, it's about international crisis spots, you get a 502 gateway error. And 504 gateway timeout. Yeah, now if you go to it, no, no. But if you go to it, yeah, if you go to another browser, it works, even another text browser. But, but the top of the page says YouTube, but it's not a YouTube site. So like whoever put this page together, I don't know what they were smoking, probably something that shouldn't be legal here. Mm. Um, so it, it looks like it's different from here at least. So maybe that webmaster did read your, your email, he changed your 502 to a 504 for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know. Um, but but uh, you know, there's a lot of inconsistencies about these sites. And then, like, um, if you go, uh, Larry, you ready for those sites? Yeah. You don't have to close your browser, by the way. You can just hit a G and go to the next site. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so go to uh, uh, theamericanconservative.com. You must like that site. American Conservative. Conservative. Yeah. Oh, he said conservative. Yeah. Like, if they were okay. And. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, you must. Oh, okay. Okay, so pick, pick an article. I don't care. Uh, Serena Williams serves tantrum. Uh, oh, serves because it's tennis. I say yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, so now you if, if you were to if you were to hit you're in links, right? Yep. Okay, if you were to hit a slash and search for the word print, you won't find it. Uh, uh, printer uh, underscore fan 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 dot Um yeah, but you yeah. see how do I do another one? Do I just do uh, slash uh, again? No, no, you do it again. Say again. Oh you have the graphics turned on, that's why. Yeah. Well, that's graphics on well, well anyway, um we just have to image the image. Yeah, we just have an image for a Okay. Uh, but maybe that's a link that goes there. Right, the, the thing is that well, actually it, it does look like it. Okay, here's the deal. The the link for the print of friendly doesn't have an alt text. So you don't know that what it is unless you read the bottom of the page where the URL is or mash enter on it and hope for the best. You know, it's like these people just slot this stuff together. It's like I don't know. Yeah. So so you the, the web is harder to navigate now than it was 10 years ago? Oh, uh, no, it started earlier than that. Like 12 years ago, it started. I told somebody, I said, you know something? Why don't they just put a countdown clock on the internet and say, after midnight Eastern time on this day, you will no longer be able to browse in these browsers, you know? And they might as well do that. Yeah. It definitely got worse once we started having front-end JavaScript frameworks. Oh, yeah. And then people stopped, absolutely just stopped caring about accessibility. I mean, for, for a while there, there was conversation about you know, how to build a proper accessible website. Uh -huh. And some people were actually doing it. It, it. it was actually working really well. But as soon as these frontwork frameworks came up, they are like, well, we have a bunch of JavaScript. We're never going to make this work. Yeah. So then people just stopped caring. There, there are now so many layers between what the, the web developer's doing and the, the web templates and everything. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, but now they have these new uh, guidelines. What is it called? WCAG 2.0. Is it is it any better? Um, I haven't read those guidelines. Yeah. So in the absence of an alt tag, you don't get the image name or the. It just says link. It just says link. It doesn't say. Now, if you have the, if you have the images turned on in the browser, you see the name of the GIF file, but that's that's kind of arduous to read. Yeah. But um, why don't we show them the portion of the demo that I was going to do it? 
Okay. So this is, as you'll hear in a second. Greetings, Chime. Karma is in your favorite sound synthesizer EP exclamation. Right? Yeah, he went. So that, that's a very commonly used uh, voice of, uh, speech, speech synthesizer in Linux called Eat Speak. Um, I run in an Eat Speak exclamation. Why does that always start with a wizard? What's a wizard? No, oh, I guess it's a new line in the beginning. Yeah, I guess that's just telling you it's a new one, yeah. I've never heard that. This is the future exclamation. All right, yeah. so, and, and it does interesting things like... I'm an Power Bash speech, not DXT, to text, Tom. A total influence is the junction of an immense military establishment, like and a lot of time like that I'm running a demon speech yeah, exclamation. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, is, that, is, that, is, that, is, that, is that typical of the voice synthesized right now? Uh, uh, that is pretty that's horrible, right? <laughs> well, it is. That's, and Larry likes it. That's the thing. <laughs> it is when the robots horrible. come, they're going to get y'all. <laughs> There's they're a bunch of voices out there. Some are more listenable than others. I, I don't particularly care for that one, but uh, Chime over there likes it. Well, like, like, no, 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 Chime doesn't. Chime oh, he didn't like it either? It. Oh, okay. Apparently some people prefer uh, oh, human-sounding voices, other people that like to listen very quickly, don't yes. really care as much, right. and they're looking for kind of a... Intelligibility, I guess, was the buzzword. Yeah. Um, to, to be able to speak really quickly, right? And then I so the look, human sound is. There are a lot of blind people who like to play their talking books or their, or any of this stuff at a very rapid, high rate. Okay. I, okay. In my, I guess yes. that's what I was asking. I, so maybe you guys are like much better at it than we are. You know, well, I don't know that you can make a generalization <laughs> like that, but I, I think it's personal preference. I would rather hear conversational speech at the regular speed, speaking rate that the human being talks. Now, your your dad talk at home is a little more, a little less robotic sound, right? Well, yeah. because like like Adobe would have, I don't know, is Adobe a big player in this? Like, it, uh, like like you can take like an Adobe Acrobat, I mean an Adobe document, and and do the speech synthesizer. It sounds like a normal so, person. Yeah. So let me, uh, we have some other samples, so we'll see okay. these increasing. Awesome. Yeah. With the more te the old fashioned text to speech like that, you, after you've listened to them for a few hours, your brain just fills in the gaps. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess. Yeah. Okay. It's probably yeah. a lot like. You have trouble understanding it after for a few hours. Yeah. yeah. Reading words is like extra with letters. The misspelled reading. words yeah. or missing letters. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. All right. So this is an example of a first generation dead mm -hmm. So this is probably similar to your, your eyes. Right, but it sounds uh, actually worse than that. It's worse than that. This is the first generation dead talk speaking. This speech system was developed by Dennis Glenn, also University of MIT, and then the piece that I designed. This speech system is still in development at this time, but is expected to at least and be pure and commercially available speech system. So, to my ear, the e-speech sounds better than that. What, what time frame do you think that was? That yeah, was definitely early 80s. Early 80s? Okay. Yeah. All right. So here we have a sample from a Roku, which you used quite a bit, right? Yes. It, 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 the front. Main menu, John, button, one of six. NCDS news, 42 channels. Hey, you'll notice, yeah, you have that off very loud. Yeah. The, the thing that, NCDS news, ABC news, button, one of four. You'll notice the thing about the Roku is that it's very mundane speech. I mean, it's, it's, it's sort of understandable, but there's an inflection that's missing that makes it really hard to hear. It's like, I, I'm used to hearing very flowery speech. I like it. I mean, that's the thing that, ideally, in an ideal world, as, a, as an Aquarian dreamer, I would have to say, you know, I would like to have speech that would represent, you know, the person who's feelings are attached to that. So if somebody's writing me a letter and they're happy or they're crying or whatever it is, I want to know from the letter what they, how they feel by the, the speech that's coming out. And right now there's no way to do that except there's an Israeli company that, I don't know if you found that, uh, it's called Vivo Text that's, work, that's working on that. Um, and, um, yeah. there, there's a lot of people working on next generation sounds and speech systems. All right, here's your favorite. You want to other than you see that, it's going to be awfully loud. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead. We are watching Vertical with Chris Matthews. 0912201 MSNBC 209. Live TV. That's, that's, the, that's Dish Network's Wally. 
And if you notice the, the, the kind of hissing and hiccuping in between words, it's real kludgy. I mean, I, the Dish Network and DirecTV were required to get speed because of the FCC law about uh, set-top boxes. Okay. Now, UVerse doesn't have speech, and they never will, because they're never going to make another set-top box. And they had to send the blind people tablets so they could use their UVerse boxes. Unfortunately, the touch screens, I never got to learn it. Here's the new one for you, John. Tell me what you think of this one. Uh-oh. Greetings, Chime. My name is Takatra. I am a new deep learning based speech synthesizer developed at Google. Is this Takatron 2 or 1? <laughs> I don't know. I, actually, I, I just downloaded some stuff that's, off that's my account. Is that, is that a little bit spliced? Do you, do you, Brian, do you think that's spliced? At it's, all? It sounds like it's a little stuttery. Yeah. But I, mean, I mean, just the one on my uh, device over here, it, I don't know if you can hear it, but it has um, its eloquence, which is kind of old but actually pretty intelligible, which is not a buzzword, by the way. Uh, and if I just have it. It's just reading my shopping list. Yeah, it's the same speech as this, I'm Dan. That's eloquence. Yeah, That's eloquence. It's the same speech as this. Okay, yeah, refresh my memory. Eloquence is the it's made by Windows Nuance. version. It's the same thing as Voxen on Linux. Yes. It's made by Nuance. Yeah, yeah right. it's what uh, Josh. Well, just for Windows, that was kind of the go-to screen reader for uh, for a while, and now they're using uh, the uh, a lot of the yeah, what was, they call the vocalizer like voices. Version one. So the, this was off a guy's get out of town. I can look it up later. Um, it's not bad. He, he made a, a web interface where you could type in some text and get speech. Um, actually, well, here's a, and it, it, I think it is an early example because when I put in a longer speech. It starts stuttering after like 14 yeah. seconds or so. A bite is limited to keeping the pieces in a military establishment. Uh, this must be my favorite equipment. So they kind of, oh, yeah. it started. Is she laughing or what? <laughs> well, I, at first I thought it was because there was a new line in this in the text that I pasted into it, but then I got rid of the new lines and it still did it. Oh. So I, I, mean, I suspected high... something to do with the way he was parsing the text maybe or something else. I tried some other things, actually I can break this up. The highs were really good on there, the, but the hard, the hard part with those is that, you know, you need to have the data to actually produce good quality results. I mean, it's AI. It's like the most important thing is just having the data. And that's one thing that Google doesn't necessarily provide. They, they, they provided, like, the, the algorithms. Um, Tacotron 2 is supposed to be Tacotron 1 mixed with WaveNet. And it sounds really good. Um, but the thing is, is like I, I think it's pretty hard to to build it yourself. And if you have to build it yourself, then you have to generate. I, so I used the one of their models. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, so I didn't go in and train a whole deep neural network. See, I just used some other guys. You had a checkpointed model. But, yeah. yeah. See, like the, the AT and T natural voices are all spliced. I mean, you listen to no weather radio, and it really doesn't sound that good at all. I and mean, when they had when they had the death talk on there years ago. It was good speech, but the sales of the weather radios dropped off, so they had to get rid of it. Yeah. So, so you can see here, it takes a long time to actually, this little web app that I put together to, to generate the speech. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So in that case, it's a pretty good with numbers, right? Um, so I, I think it has something to do with the, maybe it's just the length of the text, the length of the string that's passed to it or something, I'm not sure. It's like the front here. It's very easy to do like word by word because that's like a table lookup. So you're just splicing, but it's very hard to just to it's say a sentence. Oh, yeah. A sentence is very sentence. hard, right? Sure. Because there's so many possibilities. Sure. But, but it, 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 it should improve. I was wondering if I might add a comment that might kind of clarify how this uh, yeah, yeah. stuff yeah. can work, how the voices work with the screen reader. Go ahead, Brian. If I might. So, uh, the uh, just uh, just a note about the screen reader. The, vo the voice is very important because it's we want you want it to be listenable, something that you can stand for at least five minutes or more. But besides that, the screen reader is is the uh, crucial feature. What the screen reader does is it interprets the information that the voice is speaking, and sometimes reformats it. So, for instance, uh, somebody like Chime. He comes to a huge, voluminous page like uh, 
like CNN, he has to have a quick way as a blind person to get to the articles. You guys can just, you know, eyeball it. But he has to wait to be, has to have a way, way, a trick to be able to, for instance, leap to the article. And that's a lot of what the screen reader is about. Now, in JAWS, of course, you have skip to skip past repeated text. Does that really work well? We have we have that. We have uh, a lot of uh, quick keys. Like if you press H, it'll go to the next next heading, that sort of thing. And then a lot of us do a screen find, which I think every screen reader user will use, uh, no matter what screen reader it is, because they know once they're familiar with a page that, for instance. Um, if they're uh, shopping on Amazon, they'll want to look for a shopping cart, for the, find the shopping cart, so they might simply search for the word cart to get there quickly. Yeah, yeah exactly. That sort of thing. Yeah. And then it, it's with the, uh, just one more moment, the, uh, Denise and I have devices here. For instance, I have a Braille note which uses like an Android, it uses an overlay to the Android system, and it also has the Android uh, a uh, touch screen if I, if I choose to use it. Mostly I choose to use the Braille display. Denise here has an iPhone which uses a screen reader developed by the Apple company called, uh, it's ex built into ac the accessibility features of voiceover. And she uses uh, it in, in conjunction with uh, voice and Braille. For instance, you got, what do you got, Instacart open now? Well, no, actually I was, I was looking at booking lifts, but I didn't want to book it accidentally, so. So this uses all iPhones have voiceover. The all um, so you just have to go to accessibility and enable it. If, you know so, but the gestures change. So if if you want to really annoy somebody who can see, which I did to my sister, not meaning to, <laughs> we were looking at the Weight Watchers site, and I said, let's enable voiceover, and she says, Denise, take it off, take it off. I can't find my way around my site anymore because the gestures are different in the way that we. Um, a single tap speaks the icon and a double tap opens it. Oh yeah. So that's why, uh, and, and, so, and this is a braille tooth keyboard so that, uh, like right now it's on lift, and um, so I, I'm, able, I'm able to read in braille and actually it's got a braille writer type key so it's not like a typewriter, they're not, it's actually the six dot format with a space and a back, uh, back and enter. So that way you, you can use the braille keyboard style that we're familiar with to input Braille and then it also allows us to read what's showing up on the iPhone screen uh, in Braille on the Braille display. So we can Okay, so the top half of your device there is the Braille keyboard? Yes, uh-huh. And, okay. and then and the, it's, uh, the got bottom half cells. is the part you're reading and it looks like metal pins kind of come up? Yes, uh-huh. Go up and down? Depending. Yeah, exactly. Yes, okay. uh-huh. So we thought that would add uh, and, and some, uh, you know, because we have iOS, which is Apple, then we have the Google device, which is Android, and then we also have a Braille pen, which is Polish. It's a made in Poland. It's a Braille device made in Poland. So we have a number of devices to try to access the technological world. I've, I've, read, I've read the news version of Google uh, because of, for security reasons, they've locked down the accessibility feature. And they made it a lot more difficult to yeah. actually have a screen reader. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's um, we're the same thing. The um, so when you're using one of these Braille devices, you have to tell your screen reader that you have a Braille device attached, and apparently there's some kind of layer software in there, some service or. Um, you get Oh, well, this is a Bluetooth Braille keyboard, so it's like any... Oh, okay. So the, it's part of the screen reader. It's part you, of the screen you let it know okay. there's a Braille display, and it, so, it connects so the, through Bluetooth, and, it and finds then they, it and connects. they work okay, together. Okay, so there's an accessibility API in the iPhone. Yeah. Yes, right? yes, uh-huh. Yeah. And then the logic's in the device. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. iPhone has the best accessibility feature than all devices. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, well, thank you very much for allowing us to... Oh, well, uh, thanks for indulging us. Thank you very much. Indulging us. All right. Um, Where do we go from here? Oh, let's talk about some other screen readers. All right. So we brought up Bobo Eyes, your favorite one, and yeah. DOS. Okay, so I'm uh, sure. yeah. Currently uses. And, and by the way, it was another DOS screen reader called ASAP, which I never used. And a lot of people like. Did, right. did you ever use Flipper? Uh, no. Really? Never heard of it. Oh. Except I knew it was a television show. Very young. Apparently, it's one of the older ones. Oh. Okay. Um, how does Yasser compare to SpeakUp? Um, well, Speak Up was more developed. Yasser, uh, they were trying to uh, kind of 
still trying to work it after vo after vocalize. I mean, it, it, some of the key strokes were the same, but or similar. Uh, but it just never quite. Uh, it's funny. It's still in the deep end uh, repo, mm -hmm. but uh, it's not. It doesn't yeah, really does work that well. Uh, although some people it. will use it. I, I can't, unfortunately, I can't. Or leave this out in case anybody is going to see it. Or uh, just put it away. When I had you write comments on various screen readers, yes. you wrote that uh, you thought window ice yes. is very well. Yes. What do you mean by well, that? Well, I mean, um, coming from the standpoint of vocalize, they tried to make window eyes sort of similar, except that it was a Windows version. Of, a better answer. A Windows version of vocalize, but it, you know, it had a lot of the same keystrokes where you go control escape and go into the menu and make the changes. You know, in the DOS version, I was able to make all the changes and then save them. In the Windows version, each change you make, you had to save it and it would close the menu and you have to start over again. It was like a boom and then like a lie. About what? Adrian on Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. Well, yeah, Nopix was a uh, license. I forgot no, about Nopix. I somehow have it enabled. I also read like Orca has been kind of debilitated because like, for security reasons as well. Okay. Since you brought that up. So anybody running the least interest in Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Anybody running Ubuntu or Pop OS or any of the Ubuntu derivatives that have known, um, you know, are going to have a worker running. Remember, right? Screen reader on. So, you might turn that down if you have it. Oh, but that's eSpeak. No, that's, oh, well, it's eSpeak. Okay, so this is the eSpeak sound synthesizer, but it's the Orca screen reader. And by, <laughs> I think it's eSpeak. Yeah, and if I open a new tab, let's see what happens. Oh, you broke it. Oh, maybe you turned it down to the I'm not sure why. That's the point. Is it still on? Oh. These graphical screen readers are not so good. Screen reader on. Screen reader on. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so I don't know. So it's not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Window. Terminal collapse. It, push button. Window. Laminate and pop Because it's likely that Firefox isn't integrated well. Um, and oh, they're, 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 those, 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 there was an issue with Orca, I think, in the past couple of years. Well, especially with GNOME, it worked really well maybe like two years ago, but up until recently, I think for security reasons, uh, especially, and I think with Firefox, like uh, it doesn't read everything anymore. Okay. Well, there was something about this. Is there another better Firefox? Or, you know, is there another better Windows? Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Linux graphical screen reader that you would recommend? It's the, it's the best. Or Orca is supposed to be the best right now. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, but it's bad that it's not fully working. But there are little bugs here and there because, for security reasons, a lot of these screen readers access you know, have open access to a lot of the data, and it, it's caused a lot of hackers to easily steal you know passwords, um, usernames, and, and any number of things. And that's why on Google they've locked it down, and on Linux they're starting to figure out like how 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 can we provide the service. Without you know giving up you know, a lot of this I, I think Chromebox sounds really good, but I would think that it's working in common. Can you read Braille faster than you can hear? Uh, not me, but then Nissan Brian love Braille. Uh, yeah, I, I can't personally read it faster, but what the Braille allows me to do is if uh, is to hone in on a detail. For instance, it, it I, just the simplest example. I. Uh, don't know quite how a word is spelled. Now, you can spell it using a, a screen reader command using speech, but it's much quicker to have the Braille just home to it and, look, and, and I can uh, feel how, exactly how it's spelled or misspelled. What, what I saw, when I, I came across a guy who did a review of a number of uh, these, uh, screen readers, and he mentioned that he liked to listen to, uh, when he was listening to words, he would often set it to 300 words per second, which got me thinking, how fast do I read? So it turns out the typical person will read about 200 words per second. You know, even speed readers are much. Oh, per minute, per minute. And he, yeah. And he played 300 words per minute. 
A lot of ham raiders. Uh, yeah, that, that's nice. Yeah. Ham operators. Uh, which, which is kind of interesting, right? So he, he's actually able to listen to speech at approximately 1.5x the time of a human being. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Who's Fran Drescher? Oh, come on. Fran Drescher's a nanny? I don't watch, I don't watch that. Never mind. <laughs> 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 I don't watch I'm a news freak. I don't watch that. We have a good speech, trust me. All right, so you, you often complain about software speech engines? Yes, I think, well, basically the problem is that, first place, you have to have a good multi-channel sound card. And second of all, if the speech, um, like I, on this machine here, for some reason, if I want to play an MP3, I have to have pseudo in front of MP3. Okay, I'm pouring some more water. Thank you very much, folks. I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, thank you, 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 thank um, okay, and speaking of devices, you have a box. So you have uh, a smart vision to yes. Android. Yes. Okay. Why do you have to make it? Well, because you have to, you probably understand it more than I do. Uh, yeah. They won't be able to. They won't be able to hear it. You can't turn it up any longer. It doesn't go anywhere. Oh, okay. There's a cable there. You can plug it into. I don't think we're going to show anything to you. I think you just put it in the outside pocket. Basically, guys, what I did was I, I about a year or so ago. Here, take it. Okay, where? Okay. Okay. Basically, what I did about a year or two ago, I did a search in DuckDuckDuck, and I, I typed in quotes, smartphone with button, and this phone came up. And it was only available in, like, France and some other countries. So there's a dealer in the state of Oregon uh, who uh, is selling it now. It's about four or five hundred bucks. And uh, it's in here. It's good speech. Chrome. Chrome. Download. Download. Can we have you type your Gmail password in Chrome? So that I don't know how to do that. <laughs> You're welcome to try. No, that's okay. no, no, you can play with it. I, I basically only. Just send you the sound. It sounds good, it, it, right? It, that's it, a treat. It, 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 it downloads. How do, you, how do you use the, the, the phone? Like, the, you just know the position? Um, the, so there's, there's a keyboard. A, there's like yeah. an old Blackberry style oh, that's an up, down, that's... left, right sort of joystick. Oh, but that's an Android device? Oh, no, you can show it to him. Yeah. Um, it, oh, okay, that's an Android. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It looks very much like a device. Yeah. Actually, I want that. No. Yeah. So it's. Um, I, I just haven't quite gotten used to it yet, and unfortunately there's no classes. You go to the ATT store, they don't understand it. So. You took it out of the we, we, don't, we don't teach technology anymore. No. <laughs> Why, you work for ATT? <laughs> no, they don't teach technology. Yeah, but I just mean, but, but you, you, go, you go buy an Apple, and Verizon has Apple has, uh, classes for that. What do you want to do? No. Your your phone has a touch screen. Yeah, I, like I was it. mentioning that you would probably want to turn. I it do off. want to turn it off. Yeah. Uh, it's very sensitive. It's very sensitive. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so you often go on. Oh, you mentioned that there are a lot of interesting speech options for the Apple TV. Yes. You want to get into that? Well, sure. I actually got rid of both my Apple TVs. Why? Um, the Apple third generation. Oh. Which I had for fear. I absolutely when I got that device, it was the most exciting thing for five hours. Minus a quick lunch, I played with that. Found a lot of music channels and news. I'm a news junkie, so you know it was. I could finally get ABC News live and stuff, you know. And uh, then uh, it was working well. I, I could watch Al Jazeera on it and all these different things. All, all of a sudden, all of a sudden. Uh, I would the unit would would like freeze up or it would stop it would stop streaming, and when I called Apple, they said, "Well, you're gonna have to do a factory reset." Well, that wiped out my YouTube set and everything, and so every but every two days, but every two days I have to do a, a, a restart on the unit. I thought this is not gonna work for me, so I got rid of it. I had an Apple fourth generation. Uh, t Apple TV, and they they ruined the interface on that with version, and they're up to the eleventh now. And it used to be that each menu had three items across, left to right. 
and the, and the, the columns and rows were done. Then, when they added Hebrew, the, those walls between the menus went away, and it was it, it got to be really awkward to navigate. And, and they they just thought it was normal. And I, I, after it was just really frustrating, and I thought, I, this is, so I got a second Roku, and I, I tried the Amazon Fire TV. It has great speech. But a lot of the apps don't talk. And like the Roku, some of them don't talk on the air. Like YouTube doesn't talk at all. Uh, uh, ABC, a, Sirius XM doesn't talk at all. ABC News doesn't talk at all. Now, when Larry's been over the house, I, I say, oh, look at this. It doesn't talk. Oh, you got to go up and do this. It's like, oh, the, yeah. The curves are just floating off on a box. It doesn't have anything. It, was the takeaway from the Apple TV that you, as a Jewish person, aren't happy that Apple had a Hebrew to it? Is that the takeaway? No, that is funny. Uh, no, I don't know if that's officially why that happened, but it seemed it was coincidental. It was about the same time. Well, see, Hebrew is right to left. You see. And by the way, just for the if, if for edification here, uh, when I was, you know, when I first started going to Hebrew school in 1962 in Jersey, just so you know. Hebrew Braille is left to right. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I know. All right. Oh, we move on. Let's move on. Um, what do you think oh. of Apple Siri and Microsoft Cortana? Cortana. Oh. Oh, you mean the difference? Have yeah, you used them? Uh, I, 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 I've, been, I've been in the stores where we've tried them. I, they, they all have their good points. So, uh, this Google Assistant, oh, it's okay. Google Home? Yeah. yeah. The, the Google Assistant doesn't work hardly at all, I don't think. I mean, if, if I push this button and talk to it, it, it doesn't answer me. It just, I, I like, if I go, oh, I have to, I'm off the screen. Let's see. 9.38 p.m. Yeah, our lights coming in half an hour. Uh, what time is it? 9.38. He just said the time. It doesn't answer me. It just goes, Bleep. and that's all. It doesn't say anything. So it's, it's, I don't know what's wrong. Uh, I noticed you had the Amazon Alexa app in there. Yeah, Alexa. Oh. Yeah, maybe Alexa's blocking. For, for Google, do <laughs> you always have to say, okay, Google? I may. On the old phones, you didn't. Yeah, on the, on the new ones, I think you can just have them listening all the time, right? You don't even have to like it. And then trigger well, you can OK Google or something. Uh, I thought there was a way to trigger it even like, like it would listen for things like call Robert, and then all of a sudden your phone just calls. No, 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 you have to say OK Google first. You have to say OK Google. That's what the Google is. Yeah, Siri, Siri, I mean, when I had an iPhone for about three or four weeks, I mean, it was so good that I could, even though, I mean, I only knew how to use the button, you know, to push for Siri, the rest of it was all touch screen. I could actually ask Siri, you know, where, give me a list of Indian restaurants, because Susie, just my wife over there, adores Indian food. And it gave us a list of like six of them. I wrote them down, we went to some of them, you know. And so it, it was really helpful. Now with Alexa at home, you can't really do that. You could say, what's the closest? I forgot how, but it won't give you like a list. It'll, it'll, it's, it's, it's kind of messed up, you know? Yeah. Uh, that's basically all I had. You had one other thing you wanted to talk about? Well, I, I wanted to talk about some of the challenges that we still have. Um, um, for one thing, uh, maybe one of you folks has a solution for this. I, I, I got to tell you, you know, this is maybe my fourth time I've been to this log. Maybe. Fourth. And, um, Whenever I write to this log, I always get a lot of helpful answers to some very intricate questions, whether it's about DHCP, whether, regardless of what the question is, I always get answers, as where other logs, uh, maybe not so much. Um, but the... Uh, Are you talking about the log we normally do? Yeah. So, uh, uh, so, so, no. This is being recorded. Right, I know. So the, the deal is, I, um, as I said, I'm a news junkie, and so I like to watch I-24 News, which is from Israel. The, the thing, it's in English, or most of it. And the thing is that I have no way to log into that site in Linux in a, in a command you know, situation and have it uh, so I can then go to another terminal and go to, and launch the stream. Somebody said, well, I need Selenium. And we can't get that to work. It, it's uh, uh, one of Larry and I's uh, mutual uh, 
uh, uh, friends or whatever has been working on it. And what? You're referring to Mark. Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and uh, nobody can say the point that we wrote to the company that runs the subscription part of the service. It's called C L E E N G, and their answer was just use e -Links. Well, we tried that. It it, it ha doesn't have much more JavaScript than that. Yeah, that didn't help. And uh, I just you know I I don't think they'll launch the stream. Uh, somehow and, and, and record them yeah. at times or whatever. Yeah, sure, I can get on the local, you know, yeah, it's nice. Just but, you know, so, there's that. I'm trying to get more else. <laughs> there's something else that was similar. So anyway, maybe you have more questions. Do you, do you, do you use Silver? I'm sorry? Those, those, those sites aren't easily accessible through leaks. Uh, like, they, they provide a bad interface, or what you're saying? Yeah. So, yeah, so leaving would be probably your... But I, we tried it, and, and I, I don't know what the problem was, because I'm not a tech person, you know? Well, I mean, so the problem is probably swinging for framework. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and you, if you, you could build something, but it's definitely not something for him to use. Well, no, so I suspect the actual, uh, a way to solve the problem would actually be to take a script. Okay, Brian, <laughs> thanks, yeah, we'll uh, thanks you guys for coming. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I got my right hand. Sure. Right. That's actually the problem. Yeah, I know. It's a pop-up. Is it like a JavaScript model? You enjoy it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
XM channel lineup because now we have Sirius XM on Alexa. You can do that. And uh, I got this PDF and it's brutal because it doesn't go channel by channel, you know, 101, 102, 101. It's like it's it's mixed in these weird columns and and then when you convert the PDF it's even worse. Yeah. So it's like I don't know what is wrong. Sirius XM most of, and you know what's brutal is these people, if you read a lot of these mailings that come out now, you read it in a text client, and what does it say at the top? We are sorry that you can't read our content. Yeah. View it in a browser. I'm thinking, <laughs> well, you don't want to know what I'm thinking. But anyway, <laughs> I, it's like, how dare you? You know, uh, and I see this all the time, and it's like, I, I mean, uh, you, what? I was going to say, do you um, do you use the, the file type thing triggers. Oh, I have a, a, a. What about audio books and things of that nature? Um, I I haven't really messed with those too much. I know they're around. Um, uh, you know, I I I guess I was more apt to scan something and read it. But the other the, the, the unfortunate part about it is that um, if you're just reading continuously without interacting with a keyboard, you tend to get sleepy. It happens rather fast, and I just. And that's the, that's why I tend to scan the, or, you know skim things you know read part of a sentence and then ah, 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 and then hit the down arrow and go to the next one or whatever it's like uh, that explains why you never answer the questions in my emails I, no, no. <laughs> I do but your questions are so much cryptic you know so you get one if you're going Okay. But yeah, China's right. If you just sit and listen to a, an audio book after 10 minutes, you're kind of like, I have to do dishes when you're standing up because it does tend to put you to sleep, but it's not just that other people have the same experience. And, and it's even worse if you're wearing headphones and listening to a talking oh, yeah. book. Yeah. I, was, I, was in, I was in public school in New Jersey, and the one of the, the special... Wait, 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 go back. What's the difference between an audio book and a talk? Talking books came on records, on, on record albums at eight or third inches per second. Back in the, it, they changed the speed in 1967 to eight and a third from 16 and two thirds. And people would record, you know, they'd go to like recordings for the blind or one of these things and record a book onto records and you, you could borrow them from regional libraries. And then new, like Newsweek Magazine came on those records too. And, there weren't a lot of... Um, so they were basically an early form of a, what we call an audio book now. Yeah, so, yeah. But the thing about it was that when I was in school and I'd be wearing headphones listening to a book, I would start to drift off. And you know, and even an interesting book about the space program or something, I would drift off. I, you know, it just With headphones, that happens. I don't like wearing headphones. I, except if I'm going to demo, gee, this sounds great in stereo, let me hear it for a few seconds, that's fine. But. You know, and I love stereo. I mean, I'm, I'm fascinated by, you know, getting some of the, the, the old, uh, you know, 45s or whatever that are remastered in stereo or whatever. They sound great now, you know, but anyway. Does he, does he, use, uh, does he use YouTube Downloader? Yes. Terminal? No, but it, it's actually, um, I use two, I use two um, YouTube programs. One is YouTube-DL, yeah. and the other one is YouTube-Viewer. And what YouTube Viewer gives me, if you type... You guys YouTube, use YouTube Viewer? They never heard of it. It's kind of a command line well, no, it's interface menu. Yeah, for me using YouTube, right? In other words, so, so you, if you type YouTube Viewer, YouTube-Viewer space minus U equals sign PBS NewsHour, then it shows you all the items on the McNeil Lair NewsHour, you know, one by one, and then you type the numbers of the ones you want to download. So it's like menu-driven. It's really mm -hmm. nice. And it tells you the URL of the, uh, you know, the file. So in case what? Okay. So in case it gets complicated, you can then type it into YouTube DL and finish the thing off. That's awesome. Yeah. Does anyone have any other questions? Mm -hmm. Oh, back in the car. 
Have you had any experience with uh, Microsoft Sam back in like two? Oh, it, that doesn't sound very good. <laughs> Microsoft Sam? Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's kind of. Um, that, what, what is Microsoft? Um, it's a male uh, voice. It's very kind of deep. I, I, I mean, it's not hard. It's okay, not, is this one of the voices you can. Sam's the name of a person, of a yes. voice profile Each. within Sappy or something? Yeah, I mean, I think it is. Um, there, there's a very good voice in Sappy that Susie really just adores on her Windows 7 machine. It's called Mary. Mary. And there's, there was supposedly a program in Linux called Open Mary, but I don't mm -hmm. think it ever got going. I mean, it would be nice to have Sappy Four voices in Linux. Then there was Heather uh, that Social Security uses, but we can't find the company that does it. It is really. Oh, it's it's really wonderful. It is really. It's called, security. Yeah, I mean, when Social Security sends your statement or whatever, I mean, it just oh, it's wonderful. And I don't think a human being's reading it, but you, it's really good. What do you mean when Social Security sends your statement? <laughs> <laughs> send you a, a CD or something? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. More questions? And, and then I know from our mail experience, you get, you receive braille from uh, investment companies and other yeah. places, right? And, like and they, when they have to do their disclosures, they have to send them to the blind and braille. Well, with and also, I have, no, a, I have a standalone scanner. With, I forgot what the voice is. I have two choices, a man or a woman. I clear, but it's a standalone scanner, because what happens is a lot of the technology, let's say if I had a scanner hooked up to a computer, the software for the scanner may not be compatible with an upgrade with the software for the computer, and so they don't, it's like JAWS, JAWS doesn't always keep up with the, the upgrades of the computer, so they're not always compatible, so I decided to get a standalone scanner. Mm -hmm. Susie, I think yours is at t Natural Voices. Okay. And they're spliced. They but say. it's, a, it's a, a standalone scanner. I don't have to yeah. worry about it. It's compatible with the computer. Right. Um, I, I beg to differ, Susie, because you have the, the Twain inf interface, which has a really funny name, if I remember right. It's something like this is. This, uh, no, we're talking about any important name. What is it? Technology without any important name. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's a great. <laughs> yeah. Technology with that is important. Yeah. No, but I, I think that's an important point because with your standalone devices, you guys get a lot more usability out of them yeah. and longevity, right? Yeah. Yeah, but, but you can't save files or anything. You, you know, it's just, no, you have to save them to the SD card. If I had a phone card, I would have to save them to the SD card. Not on that. No, not on that. Oh, I'm sure. Not that one. And yes, and yes, there are. Uh, OCR solutions in Linux, the Abby Fine Reader, I think, is one of them. Yeah. Does, uh, does he enjoy, I mean, do you enjoy the Google text to speech, the offline version, or is it too great? I don't, I'm not sure what it sounds like. I, 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 like I said, I like the Chromebox speech, that's really good. Uh, the, the speech like on the Android phone. Oh, when the, when yeah. the accessibility apps are, with like a, a browser page is being read by your phone. Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't, I, I guess. You haven't tried it? No. What are you waiting for? What? I, I, yeah. Well. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, you, you couldn't fast forward through it, understand? Yeah, right. Something like right. that. So, any more questions? Are there any keyboard shortcuts you use a lot? Um, <laughs> keyboard shortcuts. Well, well, you do a lot of copy and paste. Yeah. You, you well, in speak up, you, you could do uh, uh, like a, uh, there's two insert keys over here. Well, this one and like a nine mar uh, marks it, and then I think a, uh, uh, you know, and then you cut the text, and then you want, you know, send it over. The one thing that maybe one of you, speaking of keyboard, I'm so, in the words of Richard Nixon, I'm so glad you asked that question. Um, yeah, that's Android. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they have, they have a lot of different voices. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, he hasn't played a lot of this stuff. Well, because I was wondering, I was asking him, like, um, I don't know if you guys know, if, if that voice isn't that bad, I mean. Is it possible to use that on, on, the, on the Linux system? I would love to. So, okay, so there, there's I a wonder, question I can I, I wonder if we can import it that needs, voice. It into needs drivers for speech. Oh, okay. What is speech to say? Speak, well, that's, I guess that's what it says. So, so on most Linux systems that I'm aware of, there's a, a service layer called Speech Dispatcher that's meant to be a common interface for all the uh, speech synthesizer speech engines to use. And then the screen readers send their commands to the speech dispatcher and goes down. So there might be a way to do exactly that, like yeah. somehow run 
to the, to, the, to, the, to the gentleman who asked me about shortcuts, I, that you just reminded me of something I've been dying to ask you guys. Um, if you, uh, you know how you go uh, all, all F1 through all mm -hmm. F12 and you get the first row of consoles? How do you do that with the write-off? We can't get that to work. So you go 13 through 24. He, I don't he want, opens up I don't 24 want, virtual terminals. I don't want to have to type CHVT space 23 all the time. Yeah, I, I do it, but it's like, there's a way to do it with the write-off key. And how do you set that up? Why don't you just use Emacs in one terminal? See, most of us, most of us, most of us don't. Well, they have seven virtual systems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you barely use one of them. So they usually go in one. Maybe three of them. Yeah. Well, I, 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 tend to, yeah. I tend to have my MP3 directory open in one console. My, my shell world account. So each terminal is given a specific task yeah. in this yeah, world. So, so that's an interesting thing. So it's just kind of up there. It's, it's a kernel <laughs> argument to say, to, to do all of that yeah. stuff. So, 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 so apparently. That's an interesting question. Does Tmux work with the text to speech? Oh, you mean screen? Yeah, same, same. Um, no, 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 no. It's a little, maybe it's a little kludgy. I, we were trying to get Screen to work a few weeks ago. We had some trouble with it. Oh, Mark and I. The Screen app. The Screen application. You type in Screen. Regular is it like Screen, like a yeah. team up yeah. or, or, or Screen? Like, do I, they work on text? Yeah. They work. He just has. I think it's because. I think it's because. I think it's because. How it sounds when you're holding down control on it. With the screen reader, it's very jarring. Oh, I see. So whenever he does it, it the, uh, hold that down, hold that down, and then find the next key. Oh, that's it's a very point. disconcerting yeah, yeah. fashion. And well, so that he was having a, we were trying to work through it the other day. Oh, that's Mark. Yeah, oh, that's Mark. You're here. Okay. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't know you got here. What was, um, were, you, were you here for the discussion about selenium? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, Okay, good. We said somebody's going to put some information over there. Yeah. It seems like it might be a few of us in the time. Yeah, yeah, we should probably say. Why don't we do one more question? Sure. Anybody have a, okay. a, a final question? Actually, last question. Right. Right. Well, it doesn't look like a question. Yeah. I think we're good. Very good. Awesome. Right. Let's thank our speaker. Yeah. Yeah.